Find functional hilarity at the Biffa Emporium. Girl, it's what I heard. Allegedly. It's just the word. Allegedly. It's on the street. Allegedly. I sing to the beat. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. All right, let's get back to Carlos Thick Ton King's podcast. First up, his episode with Half a Hawk. Can somebody get him something for his congestion? Why he always sounds stuffed up? So Mariah still wants to do TV. She's gotten back into writing. So Carlos originally offered Mariah a position on Housewives of Atlanta. But she had already gotten married to medicine going, so she said, I'm going to get my own show. So back in season three of Atlanta, she was pitching this show, and Bravo originally said, "Uh uh-uh. Originally, Bravo didn't want to compete with their top black show with another top black show, but she kept improving her pitch. It was picked up by TLC, but she decided to go with Bravo once she got him to get that reach. So Mariah was upset she was only an associate producer on the credits when she created the shit. So the first time she shot the show, she wasn't on it. I think you should have stayed off of it and then... And then you could have been a real housewife of Atlanta who was also a reality TV producer. And that would have been a very, very interesting dynamic. So Carlos asked a shady question. How did you feel when everyone said the show changed when you didn't recognize Quad was the star? She said it was production's narrative that there wasn't room for two stars, not hers. She handpicked all the women and wanted to work with them as a sisterhood of sisters, scissoring in a circle. Now, Mariah did have a good point. She said everybody has their star season, so I thought it was going to change regardless, which is true. Everybody has their moment, except for boring Teddy. She said I never treated the girls like my employees. I I don't know. I can see you being hell on heels behind the scenes. She said I called myself the queen bee to get people to ask who created the show so I wouldn't be in breach of contract. So season two, she got her co-EP credit. Once she got the EP credit, it caused division amongst the cast. No, you just started smelling your ass. She said things changed with the producers too, and they always had the same goal, which I guess was to steal the show. And then they phased her out. But the women didn't like you, the production didn't like you, so you're the common denominator. Maybe you were just a pain in the ass. They thought she was out after season one. Also, I remember when Simone was sick of your shit, and got Jackie and everybody else together and voted you out the group, basically. Some of this stuff isn't adding up with what actually happened. Now, is that show in the shadow of Atlanta Housewives? Yes, but it's also because it's more mature. It's not giving us mess and drink throwing, well, except for that first season. It's supposed to be more cerebral, more refined. I think that we're sick of calling Tessa. I think that new Indian heifer ain't working out. And I'm tired of Toya. I think we need some new heifers. Dr. Jackie been real boring, real mute. Her and Simone's squabbling has gotten dry. It needs a new cast. We don't need to bring Mariah back. Carlos said his favorite moment was season six when they browbeat Simone back into that marriage to Cecil waste $24,000 on Kids Force Whitmore. He misses Mariah and Quad's friendship. But does she? Of course she does. Every narcissist needs a sidekick. Girl, none of your cast stood up for you. So you were the Amanda Seals of the show. They realized you were a personnel problem. It's been a lot of whining, a lot of misleading answers, a lot of thems and theys, a lot of things that don't make sense. But basically everybody on set hated you. Nobody was sorry to see you go. She said everything worked out so she didn't have to sue. So I guess it was like an out-of-court settlement or they gave her the executive producer title that she wanted. But what about the coin? It's all so vague. It's been a lot of non-answers. She ain't talked to one cast member. Yeah, girl, you the problem. Well, that was a boring non-interview. She said she might do reality again, but ensemble scares her. Yeah, because you know you'll get voted off again. 
but we gonna do another episode. It's a raindrops Q and A. I hope he answers my question about Elise Neal in that light. Okay, so the first question is about casting. Do you and the network ever disagree about who should come on or come back? And he said, oh yeah. He's giving us a love and hip hop example. He was the co-executive producer of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. You sorry fuck. You sorry fuck. Oh, he said, we had lots of concerns about Erica Dixon. We like Scrappy, though. Stevie and Mimi were, of course, a shoe in. I'm sure a dirty shoe strung over a telephone pole. Scrappy was a household name. Whose house is you hanging out at? Household. So Mona fought Carlos on Carly. Damn, I wish they had won that fight. Who would they have replaced her with? I could have lived without that cottage cheese ass. So that's why Carly came on telling Mimi that Stevie J was with Joseline. This is a lot more interesting than that Mariah crap. It's time. What makes a good reality star? Now he's going on about Nini. I think it's being able to evolve and also knowing how to go away for a season and then bring it back. He said Peter Thomas is on his list with Nene in New York. Peter Thomas? Penelope Thomas Bailey. Girl boom. Ray J? Ray J ain't that interesting no more. Okay, he talking about they're the first of their kind. Yeah, but reality TV is different. You need to be more of a, a selling sunset type of tea or a million dollar listing that also has longevity. You ain't putting too much business in the street and you can't evolve. He said, you don't have to be big and boisterous like NeNe Leakes. You could be messy like Melody Holt. Oh Lord, you could hear him just trying so hard to enunciate. He was able to get out transparent, but then he said, vulnerable, vulnerable, not vulnerable. Lord, you just be dropping letters all over the room. Vulnerable. Just no L. Just no a vulnerable. <laughs> Carlos said, you ain't got to be a fighter, though. I get people DMing me saying, I'll fight somebody. He said, you better take that on to Zeus. But he called it the screaming app. Like you so above it. Hold on. You were producing Love and Hip Hop and Housewives of Atlanta. But you going to say... You don't throw hands on your shows. Liar. You're a liar. He says you got to be authentic. Don't be ratchet and try and be sophisticated and then you don't like your portrayal or edit when they're your words, Heifer. Carlos, you do not start breaking out into song on your show. That's what we do over here. Now, I know you copying Andy, but uh, you, if you going to give some inspiration, go on and give credit where credit is due. He said, I'll keep it real with you. I told Letitia Scott, I don't know about her. And we still don't know. <laughs> he gonna say, you don't say anything in scenes. Your voice quivers. Well, what does your thick tongue do? It just lays there like a bump on a stump. Somebody asked, does a franchise ever get too dependent on a fight where it belabors the point? Yes, we've seen it on Bravo many times. Kenya and Portia, example one. However, he uses the Mimi versus Jocelyn fight. He said, well, after six seasons, they went on and became cordial because we'd seen everything. And we had seen everything. We've seen their cervixes for less than a quarter. He also brings up Kenya versus Phaedra where that kind of got boring. But Phaedra just got herself off the show. Otherwise, them two would have been sniping at each other forever like Kenya and Portia. So we getting all these extras on Love and Marriage Huntsville because everybody's tired of Melody and Martell arguing every 15 minutes. So that's why we've got Tisha's family as pinch hitters and Mel's pit bulls. So the last question is, what needs to be made better in the reality TV space? So nothing about Elise Neal, huh? Keep playing a cagey heifer. He gonna say we're over the violence. No, we're not. You were there when Teresa gave the table flip. Boy, please. We don't want to bop all the time. We don't want to fight every episode, but a slug a season will do us right. I don't know how you can forget how much when we love it when bops connect. All right, well, that was the shit. So we got two more coming up, honey. No rest for the wicked. We got one episode with Claudia Jordan where we go over Puerto Rico 
After that, we have the iconic ex-con, Marlo Hampton. Okay, I have to go and make a burger right quick. Already the episode starting with Claudia crying and whining. Now, girl, I will say the public did not take to you like a duck to water. But this is partially why. You too pretty to be crying. I'm not invalidating your feelings. I'm telling you how the public feels. So he met her when he was working on Hollywood Divas dropping lights on Elise Neal's head. <laughs> Carlos said after season six, he realized Kenya needed a friend, so he was looking for a new heifer. So Claudia is friends with Kenya in real life. That was her in. Carlos wanted Claudia to be a peach holder, but production made her a friend of the show since she was Poe. He said they wanted Demetria to be a housewife, but hell, she didn't want to film with the ladies because they weren't her real friends. Are they anybody's real friends? So we get to talking about Puerto Rico. Claudia says, well, I just went to have a good time. No, you went to start some shit. You saw them picking on Demetria, and you were like, okay, now's my opportunity to be the good guy and defend this boring woman. I feel like they weren't necessarily hazing Demetria as much as they were trying to get something out of her. Because we didn't get shit. Oh, wait, what? Carlos says everybody thought that Claudia was coming for Nini just because she wanted a peach. I mean... Now, I believe that you weren't desperate for money because I remember when I met you, you told me the same story about how you didn't sign your contract until the reunion. However, you can't say you're on a show like that and say, oh, I don't care about a peach. Of course you want a peach. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on the show. It's okay to say, well, I was giving something to the camera. I had to do something and Nene had gotten on my nerves. So it was genuine, but you're on the show to see us interact. So I interacted. Now, Carlos says something I actually agree with. People hate on Claudia just to hate on her. What has she done? She didn't perform for Trump like Chrisette Michelle. I don't see her out here saying negative things about black women. What has she done? Now, I remember the Ebony article where Wesley Snipes said he liked Asian women better than black women. I remember that, but I don't remember what Claudia said. Let me know what she said. Then she briefly mentions the first 15, which I thought was cute, but she was getting a lot of hate at the time. I've gotten a lot of hate too, girl. I know how you feel. So Carlos asks her, did she rehearse her reads? And she says, no. I mean, even if you did, so what? Haven't we all thought, you know what? Next time I see that heifer, I'm going to give her this. So I don't think it's that unrealistic. Like these reality shows are so damn real anyway, I'd rather have a good rehearsed read than an impromptu ignorant one. So after the Puerto Rico scene, Nene told production that Claudia should have been the housewife and not Demetria. Oh God, really? We gonna bring up Sissy Smoke Yay He Who watching the next 15? Hell, he should have been on it. He might be who we could do a reboot. Oh my goodness, Jesse said if he tweeted about that show, it would take his career because they was trying to get some full free press and promomo. Well, look at that little career now. So Claudia lives in Dallas and Carlos asked her if she'd do Real Housewives of Dallas. And she said, oh yeah, I came in green, but now I'm ready to play. I'd watch it. Oh, she even auditioned for Housewives of Dallas, but they were only accepting whites or white adjacents. But because she got Fox Soul, it wouldn't work out. Claudia says that Dallas really missed out on casting the wealthy black women of the city. She said, I got five heifers on deck right now, ready to film. All right, well, that was the shit. So now let's get to Marlo Amos. So originally, Marlo turned them down for a peach. So we get a lot of talk about people telling Marlo, you're never going to get a peach, never get a peach. Carlos said, even I said you wasn't going to get one, at least this season. But Marlo persevered. She said she really respects Nene for getting her on the show and fighting for her throughout. I can dig it. Marlo also said, you know, it's like dating a man who gonna diss you but know how to lay you down. You can't diss me. I don't play that shit. Carlo said, oh, I know I'm still blocked by Nene on Twitter. I'm probably blocked now. He said, but Nene did text him and congratulate him on his new show and his podcast. Carlos said the fans are wondering if Nene is jealous of Marlo for her peach. I don't think Nene is jealous. I think Nene is confused. 
I think Nene thinks that there's still a spot for her on the show. That's what I think. I don't think Nene's jealous. I think she's delusional. Delulu. Oh, I hope the sound's working. Marlo tells the story of how she got her pee, which was the same day one of her Hermes bags came in. She went to go pick up the bag, got home. The cameras were there to surprise her. Child, you act like it was Publisher's Clearinghouse. But Carlos has a good follow-up. How did you go from passing on the peach to begging for it? Girl, you still gonna act like you was dating Charles Grant? I don't think you've even seen a black penis, but that's just me. That's just me. Like I said in the other video, there are McKenzie's. There are also Marlowe's. Marlowe's only date white men with money and ain't nothing wrong with it. They need love too. Shit, men gone put, men gone men, so I'd rather put up with a rich one than a poor one. So originally Marlo was too busy hoeing to care about the peach, but after the show took off, she realized she wanted the coin. She wanted the prestige of the peach. Oh, we got a little tea when Carlos got buck. During the season nine glamping trip, Kenya said, Marlo, I'm not going to give you anything because you just want a peach. Carlos said, you ladies are going to give her everything she wants sitting around here in your Fashion Nova outfits. Oh, Jesus, Carlos, do you have to say misunderstood every episode? Marlo ain't misunderstood. She's a hoe and we know. Marlo talk about, well, I was faithful to the network. I should have had a peach. You were faithful to the network because nobody else would work with you. Being peachless reminded her of being a foster child. She had a temporary home, but she never felt good enough. I guess now you adopted? Okay. Carlo said this is Marlo's season. I mean, we opened with her La Archive, but I feel like it's sadly more focused on Drew and Shit Ray. He said her and Sheree are a funny duo. No, me and Chris are a funny duo. Her and Sheree are extras that you don't want to read all about. Carlos asked why Marlo and Kenya ain't friends no more, and Marlo said, well, Kenya needs a storyline, and she's right. Now that she's lost her crouching husband, hidden baby daddy, hidden donor, what she got to say now that she can't pick a Porsche? <laughs> Marlo said, I got that ridiculous wig and tried to dress up like Rizzo for Kenya, and she wouldn't even wear an authentic designer to the opening of Le Archive. Ha! <laughs> Marlo said, I'm torn, but Kenya's fucked up. She needs therapy her day. So Marlo says she done with Kenya. And now we get to the vibrating panties of the last episode. I, I just thought it was too much. I don't, it's, it, it's like, can we leave some things in the boudoir? Can some things be only for only fans? She said, why don't Candy teach us how to get money rather than get, rather than get off? Give us something for the community rather than something for the coochie. Marlo said, your husband wants sex and you trying to get him to buzz us. Well, I mean, you know they love a threesome and a throuple. I'm sure Todd had his anal plug in with a zzz, zzz. <laughs> I'm telling you, we are not tuning in for flirting and squirting. At least I'm not. Oh, he said, I'm glad y'all holding Candy accountable and making her earn her check. And Marlo said, girl, you know it's been like that. Back when you was producing, she wasn't doing shit but advertising her business. And Marlo Amos is right. Child, now Marlo get to read in Kenya. She said, I'm the girl she really wanted to be. She's the girl with bad skin who works so hard. And now I'm here with her. Oh, goodness. Jazzy Fagon come back playing Marlo's ex. I don't know why he's still in the closet. I hope there's enough room with him and Big Bone Teeth in there. Now Marlo backpedals and pussy pops about Gene Simmons. She said, I never said I had sex with him. She never said I didn't, but she said I never said. She said, that man is married. I am leaving it alone. Mm-hmm, smart heifer. Spoken like a true professional. Carlo said he'd have met some of Marlo's men and none of them were old honkies. Okay, child, them the ones she let you meet. I'm sorry, I don't think Marlo would trust a messy sissy with her real business. Marlo said, I think I'll marry a man from another country, but I love a hood dude. She want a soldier. Okay, girl. Carlos, you ain't ask her where she get her money from. 
Another shitty interview. Actually, this wasn't that bad. All right, well, I guess we got to get to reasonably shitty with Gabrice, Gabrissi, and Rob Dixon. Alleged what? Alleged who? Allegedly, Lee, Lee, allegedly. Don't blame, don't sue. Allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly.